Adrian Newey to leave Red Bull. What next? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the P1 Podcast with Matt and Tommy. Or should I rephrase it, the Ferrari Pod P1 Podcast, because Adrian Newey's going to go there soon because he can't retire. He won't retire. He cannot. He's not allowed as a despairing Ferrari fan. Come on, Adrian. Come on over. But this is what is being reported, Tommy, that Adrian is done. He's he's packing his bags, he's leaving Red Bull, and we now need to talk about what's going to happen next. Indeed. Another twist in the craziest silly season ever. It's not even just the drivers now. We're having, like, massive key personnel moving, and Adrian Newey is obviously such an important part of Formula One because he's won, well, many, 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 many championships with lots of different teams. Um, So... Yeah, it's a it's a huge story. He has his career. Let's talk about it quickly. In 1980, uh, he worked for Fittipaldi as an automotive designer. Then 1987 to 1989, he uh, was the chief designer at March. Then 1990, Leighton House Racing as technical director. Then 91 to 96 at Williams as chief designer. Then 97 to 2005 with McLaren as technical director. And then he's been with Red Bull since 2006. And uh, he has been designer of no less than 12 World Constructors Championship winning cars. So... He's got the CV to really cash in at this stage, if I'm being completely honest with you. Like, I know my man is like, what, 65 years old? But I reckon, look, let's make it a round number. Let's go to 70. Let's get Ferrari a few world championships. (laughs) Five more Ferrari titles. Well, not really, because he'll have to uh, respect some gardening leave, uh, which is obviously something that that. needs to be uh, covered as well. But first thoughts, of course... The craziest, as you say, Tommy, silliest silliest of silly seasons, not even just with drivers, but with just general team personnel and everything else going on. And, I mean, thank goodness we've had something to talk about with the likes of Hamilton going to Ferrari and Adrian Newey deciding to leave Red Bull. It's, uh, it's certainly, hopefully, creating the ingredients for some great racing in the near future. And not just, even as you being a Max Verstappen fan, Max Verstappen dominating, because nobody wants to see that, Tommy, do they? We've said it before that the only thing that could have gone wrong for Red Bull at the moment is Red Bull themselves. And this this seems to be happening, we'll get into it. But yeah, my first thoughts are the fact that until this whole Horner situation happened, where I started to believe more that this would be a possibility in Nui, uh, leave. I thought uh, until that happened um, that Adrian Newey would see out you know, the rest of his Formula 1 career at Red Bull. I saw uh, a clip on a podcast that got posted maybe like half a year ago before this storm happened where Adrian was talking about like Red Bull or his family and if he left now it'd be like leaving his family so um, he, was, he was dead set on staying for the rest of his uh, career um, but that has all changed now. It certainly has. And I think it was something that you just wondered with that whole Horner situation, as you say, that it just felt like nothing actually gave. Nothing was, nothing came of it, really. There wasn't a conclusion. But now with Newey set to leave Red Bull, this is obviously something that has now given. Before we carry on, I would just like to say, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the P1 YouTube channel, we're trying to hit 500K. We've got so many glorious talking points waiting to bubble over and get ready. And we'd love for you to join the P1 fam over on YouTube. Isn't that right, Tom Bellingham? Yep, get us to half a milli. Do it. There you go. Uh, So first question comes in from Sydney XF1. How likely is Newey to Ferrari? Or is Aston Martin looking like a better choice? Right, so I'm going to give you two answers. One of which is full delusion. He's going to Ferrari 100%. Okay, listen up. Adrian, I've already pleaded to you on my personal TikTok as to reasons that you should go to Ferrari, but I'll also do it on the podcast as well. Great food, my God, Italian food. Can you get any better than that? Absolutely not. You won't get a better looking car on the grid either. Ferrari is just beautiful. You've got two fantastic drivers. Look, I mean, look, this is delusional, but there also are reasons there that I think Adrian should go to Ferrari. How likely is it, is the question from Sydney. I don't know. He's like sold his house, hasn't he? So that 
that seems like he might want to pop to Italy for a few years. You know, I'm sure you can get lovely little houses there. And Ferrari, I'm sure that I, I, I have heard that Ferrari don't like remote working. But for Newey, get him on Zoom. You know what I mean? He can show his little drawings over Zoom if necessary. It doesn't matter where Newey wants to be. Surely Ferrari will bend over backwards to get him and Lewis Hamilton in the same team. That oh, goodness gracious me. How likely is it? I don't know. I don't know, Tommy. But I want to say 100%. But I don't think it's as high as that. No. Uh, but... I do think it's going to happen. Like, my gut feeling is it's going to happen. Stop it. And I'm not just saying that. Um, I, I've, I've thought this for a while, uh, that I, I think we did a Patreon pod maybe, what, like two months ago, where we discussed the initial rumours and kind of said that, you know, we could see it happening. Uh, I think the, the key thing here is that you look at those two options. There are, there are more, of course. But Adrian New is quoted uh, not too long ago about his sort of not regrets in Formula One, but just if he could do his career again, what might what might change? And those things that he said were that he'd love to work with Ferrari, he'd love to work with Lewis Hamilton, and he'd love to work with Fernando Alonso. Now going to Aston Martin, he works with Fernando Alonso. Going to Ferrari, he works with Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari. So he ticks two massive bucket list things off. And I think Adrian Newey being a motorsport nerd through and through I, you know, I don't think for a second that Lawrence Stroll is not throwing a, I say a massive number, probably just a blank check, say just write whatever you want on it uh, and come to Aston Martin. But as someone later on in their career, I think that Adrian Newey will sort of ha pick the romantic option of, you know, wanting to deliver because what what a way to sort of end your CV if he wins a world if, if he wins one or multiple world titles we don't know at Ferrari that would just be like the pinnacle and it's and it's the same for Lewis Hamilton as a driver we said at the time it's, it's looking like a better decision now than what um it was when he first signed because we all said it's a sideways step now it's looking like Ferrari a lot better than and Mercedes seemed to be going a bit backwards but you get to the end of your you know career and people anyone in life wants to like you know tick things off their their bucket list and stuff and that that is why I think Adrian Newey will want to be at Ferrari yes absolutely I think that you make a good point and we have already highlighted he's 65 years old money I don't think at this stage of Adrian Newey's career is an object it's more about ticking off things that you've always wanted to do. When we get to 65 years old, I'm sure it'll be the same thing, where you just wanna, when you finally are on your on your deathbed, you go, God, I'm so glad I did X, Y, and Z. And and that's, I think, what, what Adrian will probably be thinking. A lot of people are saying, oh, is he gonna retire? I, if he- He could. I, he could. What a flex when everyone wants him, just to be like, you know what? Nah, and then yeah, <laughs> but I don't he think he, do. he loves it too much. Surely, I, I think as well. It's not like he has to drive. We'll, we'll be talking about Fernando Alonso when he's sixty-five. About come on, all right. When is he actually going to stop driving Formula One cars? But Newey doesn't have to drive them. He just has to design them. And clearly, he's still got it because Red Bull are absolutely outrageous at the moment. So, I and, I and think also the it, Ferrari. And sorry, and also with with Red Bull, like you say, like let let's be honest, it, it's far too coincidental the Horner situation that he's leaving Red Bull if this Horner situation hadn't have happened would he now of all times gone no you know what I'm gonna retire no so so it's not it's not a retirement like it's he's he's left to make a point or whatever he he thinks and that that's why I don't think he would retire personally which now brings us beautifully onto our next question from Winapp why is Horner acting like Newey is not a fundamental part of the project? I believe, and this is just my opinion, that it is a case of Horner just digging his heels in and just trying to make sure he stays in the position that he is in. What, that, what cost that brings, he doesn't care as long as he stays in the position that he is in. Uh, so I'm sure 
he is very aware of what Newey brings to the project, as with Max Verstappen and any other senior members of Red Bull. But this is, as I say, a case of, of Christian saying, well, no, you know, what, what would I do if I leave Red Bull? Yeah, Formula One, uh, there's a lot of big egos in Formula One and you, know, you only need to Tom watch Bellingham being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you only need to watch Strive to Survive to, uh, to see that. Um, and particularly, you know, with, with someone like Horner, obviously, uh, Red Bull have won uh, one before, you know, 2010 to 2013. And now they're dominating Formula One again. And in Christian Horner's head, he will firmly believe. And, you know, there's no doubt that, that he has led them to that success to win all those titles. Now, whether he'd have done that without these key people, uh, key people, I personally don't believe so. And I think while Horner deserves credit, um, it's not the be all and end all that, you know, he is the, it's only Christian Horner being in charge of Red Bull that meant that they won these uh, six titles, um, you know, and and more. From everything we've heard, because we've we've seen a lot of, um, uh, what's, the, what's the term, like a game of bluff between Max Verstappen's side and Helmut Marko's side and all this kind of stuff of like who's going and what, this is the first sort of maybe domino that's, that's falling now. Yes, uh, which again, God, what a segue. Next question, Alfred Greenwoo 9. Will Red Bull fall into some crisis, possibly losing Verstappen and more people with key roles in the team? So, of course, this does now open up the discussion once again about Max Verstappen and what he ends up deciding to do. And the more and more I think about it, and this again is not coming just from pure delusion, the more I feel as though there is a genuine chance that Max will leave Red Bull. Now, I, he would be silly to decide to leave and go to Mercedes or wherever in 2025. I don't think that's going to happen. I personally believe in 26, Mercedes is a genuine possibility. It You've got to think right now, if you're losing Adrian Newey, if you're... I mean, already rumoured to not have an advantage over the other big engine manufacturers in 26 when it becomes more of an engine formula and this, that and the other. You start to think about future-proofing yourself here. Are you going to put your money behind a Red Bull team that's lost Adrian Newey? Or are you going to put your money behind perhaps a Mercedes getting back to the glory days of what they've had not that long ago? Let's not forget. I know they're washed now, but there's regulation changes coming. And if you can see this this Christian Horner potential situation where he is digging his heels in, that could implode the whole team and make them fall much further behind, um, back from where they are right now. I, I'm not... A, yeah, I, it's a, such a crazy situation, but it could happen. It is a crazy situation. Said it on every single predictions uh, that we've done and every time we mention Silly Season that... You couldn't have planned it any better that we're about to get a big reg regulation change, but every single driver's contract is almost up one year early. Um, and that makes it so odd that Formula One, if tw if the 2026 regulations came in in 2025, I think Max would, would go. It's not a guarantee that Red Bull are going to be really good in 2026. I've said this before. It is a complete regulation change. Look what happened when we changed after 2013. No one, everyone thought Vettel was going to dominate forever and you'd never said in 2014 that Vettel wouldn't have even won a race and you'd have laughed your head off at, at thinking that that was going to be the case. We don't know from the outside and there's been no talk of it yet, but they might know how things are going with Ford. I'm sure Ford aren't particularly happy with the situation at Red Bull either and that's probably not helping their, their plans of developing a new, a new engine and how things are, are going. And, you know, they might have, Max and everyone that, who are on the inside might have seen stuff and go, well, we might not be very good in 2026 20, because they seem to, the teams do know, you know, like Alpine knew they were going to fall off a cliff this year. Like even though you, until you get on the track and see everyone else, the teams do know how their performance is going to be. So maybe there are warning signs in 2026. They might not be the team they are now which may seem a million miles away now but 
it is a complete, complete change. Andy Fleet 22 comes in with, if Nui is forced to see out his contract plus gardening leave, will teams wait that long for him as the 2026 cars could be built and racing by then? So of course, Nui is contracted until the end of 25. Then he'd have to do his gardening leave. So 27 is when he'd be able to start. And then if you think how much time he would need to actually fully get up to speed, he might well be turning nearly 70 then. So how I would see this is that Red Bull, of course, would not be willing to let go of Nui easily. But I feel as though Ferrari, John Elkin, Fred, you know what I'm saying? They're all going to be there saying, look, how much? Come on. How much uh, to, to let him go? And we've already seen Ferrari are very willing to put the money where their mouth is. And for people that say they can't afford it, I'm like... We need to we need it's to differentiate Ferrari. here. We need to differentiate here between the cost cap, which is about developing the car and the teams run. It does not include the top three paying individuals, which include, no no surprise, the drivers. And I would imagine that third person is three, isn't it? I'm 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 not mistaken here. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the three key personnel doesn't don't. Um, yeah, uh, it wouldn't come under or, the cost cap, which is yeah, why so, Aston Martin has become such a, a talking point because yeah. they could essentially throw whatever at, at Newey. Exactly. Uh, so with that, they can afford the Adrian Newey bills. And we've also said as well that I'm sure Adrian would do it for 50p in a meal deal because he's all about the romance and he's not about the money, Adrian. Ferrari is the way. Uh, but that is, of course, that that is how I see it going is that Newey would be able to end his contract well. Uh, it sounds like he's going to leave Red Bull very, very soon, Im imminently. So uh, I think that that will be sorted one way or another. Then he'll do his gardening leave in 25, and then 26, here we go. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if they're like, you know what, you can have a road car called the Ferrari Nui, and you can make it. But but th this is what they've got in the locker as a, t as a, as a company like Ferrari. They have the power they have the the romance and whatever uh, and adrian newey as a as a designer that would something that would be you know really exciting for him that he could do as well so that is why ferrari i think uh in pole position for it so that is it i think we're done uh what a chat exciting uh bit of well imminent news uh tommy what are your final thoughts my final thoughts are exactly what you kind of mentioned earlier that we need some, we need some juicy on track action now, please. Um, loving all this chaos of the silly season, um, but give us, give us a good one. Luckily, it's Miami next, and it's a sprint, so I'm sure it'll be great. That'll be good. Not one bad races, but two. But we'll be live <laughs> on Twitch. That P1 Tommy. Please keep we'll watching. All the content, as always. At least it's not a ridiculous early, ridiculously early one. It's actually a late one this time, so that'll be interesting. So I'll be asleep. Um, yeah, you will. But uh, no, you won't. You'll be energetic and great content coming out of your <laughs> mouth. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you very soon. Adrian Newey to Ferrari. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.